In this video, I'm going to talk through how we would go about solving a charging capacitor type problem. So this is working through on Moodle. If you go to the module page and come down, so we're going to be working on this capacitor charging sample question one. Um, there's worth note, so please note the format of the exam change for 2014-15. So the best papers for revision are the 2014-15 paper, so this one here, and also the sample paper 2014-15 here. But I'd also recommend you have a look at this capacitor charging question in addition, and the solutions are all just down here, just below. One of the other things I want to draw your attention to, click on the front page, it will show you the front page of your exam so you can familiarise yourself with the rubric. You have to answer all four questions. For all correct answers without units or with incorrect units, 0.5 marks will be deducted. That won't end up with you getting uh, negative marks. It is just if you've got everything else right and you don't have the units, you'll lose half a mark because units are really, really important. These are the constants you'll get on the front of your paper and then if you come down you can look at page 2. These will be the, question, the equations that you're given in the exam and because I adapt my teaching as we go along I've decided I'd rather you really understood the capacitor charging stuff than trying to just skim through a lot more material with you understanding it in a lot less depth. So as a result of this you only need to be able to use the top two equations relating to charging a capacitor for the exam. The other equations and content relating to these will not be on the exam so we are only looking at capacitors charging. You don't need to worry about these equations which are capacitors discharging or also for anything to do with the inductors. We're going to do this instead next semester. So let's go through our capacitor charging example question. So this is a nice kind of exam type question. You can see a marking scheme down the side. So we're going to work through this and solve the following. So we're asked a couple of different things. So we've got a 220 microfarad, so that's 10 to the minus 6 capacitor connected in series with a 4 mega ohm resistor. So mega is times 10 to the 6, a switch and a 12 volt DC voltage source. So we're asked to determine some following things relating to this circuit. Time constant of the circuit the initial voltage across the resistor just after application of the DC voltage, so that means just as soon as the switch is closed. The value of the current in the circuit and the voltage across the capacitor after 400 seconds have passed. The final amplitude of the current. The time taken for the voltage across the capacitor for each 6 volts. And then finally we've got a load of waveforms to draw. So if you understand that for a capacitor, when we charge it, it doesn't charge instantly, you've understood the basis of all of this um, area, which is referred to as DC transient analysis. When we close the switch, it allows the capacitor to charge, and we are looking in those seconds before the capacitor becomes fully charged. The amount of time it will take to become fully charged is related to the time constant of the circuit, which is why it's often the first thing you're asked to calculate in these types of questions. So I'm going to go through my examples. Let's find my word solution. So here, here we go. So what I've done to start off is I've just written what my values are so it's nice and clear for me and then I've just sketched a circuit. It's not given in the question, sometimes it will be, sometimes it won't, but this is what we're working with and I've just drawn it so it's clear. First up, we're going to calculate the time constant, so we need to know that tau is equal to R times C, then substitute in the resistor value and the capacitor value, and in this case we have a time constant of 880 seconds. So this means that this circuit is actually going to take quite a long time for the capacitor to become fully charged. If this time constant is smaller, the charging will happen faster. But that's the first thing I'm going to do. So in this question, you'd have one mark for the equation and one for the answer, including units of seconds. Second question, the initial value of the voltage across the resistor just after the application of the DC voltage. So in this, you can actually get the two marks just for stating um, the initial voltage across the resistor will be 12 volts. And you get the two marks just for that. I have also written, you don't have to give this explanation for the marks, just the answer. So the reason for this being the case is that we know the capacitor does not instantly charge. So initially there is no voltage across it. Therefore, all of that voltage from the source will be dropped across the resistor due to conservation of energy. 
Because the source voltage is 12 volts, it means the initial voltage across the resistor will be 12 volts. So you get your two marks just for giving that answer. Part C, we're moving on to something a little bit more complicated. So in this one, we're calculating the value of the current in the circuit and the value of the voltage across the capacitor after a certain amount of time has passed. So for this, we need to use our equations from the front of the exam. So here we go. So here are our equations. We need to use these first two, which relate to charging a capacitor. So we've got an expression for the current and an expression for the voltage. So we just need to use this in the correct way to get our answers. You don't need to memorize these. They are given to you. So let's go through that. So I've written again my, I've pulled the equations down from the front of the exam paper just so I can see what I'm working with. And then I've also just rewritten the values that I know to then put them into the equation. You don't need to do this. You can just launch straight into from here downwards if you want to. That's fine. I'm just making it extra clear since it's a model answer. So let's calculate the current. We're calculating uh, the current. We need to use the value of T, which is 400 in this case, which is given in the question. So we put it in. So the source voltage is 12. The value of the resistor is 4 mega ohms. And then e to the power of minus t over tau. t is 400, tau is 880. We work that out. And if you do that in your calculator, you'll get an answer in microamps. So this is 1.9 microamps, 1.9 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. Then for the voltage, it's the other equation. So it's the source voltage, which is 12 times 1. Um, times 1 minus e to the power of minus t over tau once more, um, which will put the numbers in, that will give us 2.38 volts. So it would be, for each of these, this question is worth 6 marks in total, so it's 3 for current, 3 for voltage. Of those marks, 2 are for using the equation correctly, putting the right values in, and 1 is for the answer. And again, if you get this wrong, if you get it right, but have incorrect or no units, you will lose that half a mark. So it seem, might seem a little bit intimidating, but really it's all right. There's not that much to do for six marks. Part D, final amplitude of the current. This is really, there's two ways to do this. You can either just go, well, the final value of the current in the circuit is going to be zero amps or approximately zero amps if you want to be very precise. And this is because when the capacitor is fully charged, no further current will flow through the circuit. The other way you can calculate this is instead of just saying, well, it'll be approximately zero, you can use the equation that we've just used for the current and then put a very large value of time in, and then you'll get a value out, which will be very, very close to zero, but won't quite be zero. Either of those is acceptable. So how many marks is that? So that's two marks for that as well. Um, e asks us for the time taken for the voltage across the capacitor to reach 6 volts. So this is halfway to charge essentially because we've got 12 volts source voltage and we're calculating how long is it going to take until 6 volts are across the capacitor. Let's approach this one then. This one is probably... Um, Oh, it is kind of tricky because it involves mathematical manipulation. The actual engineering isn't particularly difficult. It's can you use the maths to get to the right answer. So what were situations we're looking at? So when VC is 6 volts, uh, what will the time be? And this is we need to use our voltage equation that was given on the front of the exam. But now we need to rearrange it to make this T up here the subject of the equation. So if you're not comfortable in doing this, you need to have a practice going through your math. So there's two ways to do it. You can rearrange it straight away like I've done here, or you can put the numbers in and tidy it up and then you'll get to the answer. So it's just note, if you want to um, get rid of E, you need to take the log, which is why we've ended up with this natural log LN in there. Um, so if you do that, rearrange for T, then put our values in. So tau is 880, um, the log of 1 minus 6 over 12, or, you know, you just put that in, and you get an answer of T is equal to 610 seconds. So this one is worth another six marks. So 
it seems a little bit tricky, but it's because the marks are for doing this mathematical manipulation, which is quite tricky. So it would be two for the correct rearrangement, two for getting the numbers into the right place, essentially, and another two for the final answer, because it isn't so, it's not a trivial one to calculate that one. Which leads us nicely on to the final part of the question. So this is seven marks. You're asked to sketch waved forms illustrating how the time, how uh, the current through and the voltage across the capacitor change over time and to mark clearly the time constant on the graphs. And you're told you need to select scales for V, I and T as appropriate. Now, there seems, tends to be a kind of a split between students in some much prefer drawing graphs and hate the maths and some um, are just the other way around. So recognise as a student what your strengths and weaknesses are so you can work on all of these because to get the best marks and to be a rounded learner you need to be able to do all of it. Oh, I need to rotate my PDF so let's have a go. There's a couple of like different ways to do this. You can just do a freehand sketch. So I'm doing a really kind of over the top version of doing it, but the over appropriate scale for the graphs will show the overall shape. So we need to go for a few time constants because we know that a time constant will mean that it's 63% of the capacitor charging from zero and that it's exponential. So as we keep increasing the time constants, it's going to flatten off. So we know that tau is 880 seconds. So first up, let's calculate some values for when it's half tau. So that is 440 seconds. And it really is just a case of using those equations that you have on the front of the exam paper, putting the numbers in, getting the answer, and then repeat until you've got enough data points to plot effectively. So we've done var for tau, I've put my values in. This is all up on Moodle for you to go through and check the working if you like. And I've basically simplified the calculations that I've gone through to show the variety of things you can do. So here I've started off by putting in uh, T up here and tau here. And I've also done my VS over R there. Um, then at 880, I've done, you know, it's the same. You can see this time we've got 7.6 volts and 1.1 microamps. Now I'm going to look at 2 tau, which is 1760 seconds. This time, instead of doing minus T over tau, I just know that that's 2 tau. So I've done that. Um, get my answer. And this time I haven't done VS over R because that stays constant for this circuit. So I've just put the the later calculation step of that being 3 times 10 to the minus 6 in there. Um, and just as a note, although this is now 0 0.1, sorry, 0 0.41 times 10 to the minus 6 amps, I've gone for microamp scale because it's going to make plotting my graph easier if I keep everything in microamps. So that was 0 0.5, 1, and 2 tau, so that's fine. Um, 3 tau, it's up to you to see if you think this is reasonable or not. Um, you can go from the shape with there. I've also now gone for 3 tau because I want to have that full shape for my model answer, but it's here for completeness. You wouldn't necessarily need to do this because you're getting close enough. Normally after two time constants, you're most of the way there for these DC transients. So 3 tau is 2,640 seconds. So I've done this. So this is T over tau is minus 3. Uh, so minus T over tau is minus 3. I've just put that in. I've got 11.4 volts. Remember, our final voltage is going to be 12 volts. So we are very nearly there. And our final current is going to be approximately 0. So once more, we are getting to the point there. So now we have an appropriate scale. We can go on to plot our results. So here we go. Here is my graph. The graph paper hasn't copied very well, but here we go. So this is my graph and I've done my voltage first and this is plotted in multiples of tau because that's a nice easy scale. So note I've got my time and I've written my units. 
then I've got my voltage across my capacitor in volts and I've gone from 0 up to 12 because 12 is the final value and 0 is the starting value and I've just plotted my values for each of those voltages that I've calculated at the appropriate time and then I've joined them together and sketched it so we can see that exponential curve shape. I've also done as I was requested in that I've shown um, where the time constant is and that's 63% of charge. My current graph I've plotted in microamps, so that's times 10 to the minus 6 because it's quite a small value. So I've gone from um, more than 2 essentially, but below 2 was where I had my first value at half a tau. And then I've just plotted my my uh, data points once more and join them in so you can see this exponential decrease. I've also illustrated one tau is a 63% decrease from maximum current because this is an exponential decay. So that's how you do it. Um, things that are marks are available for in this question is showing your scales. So have you chosen an appropriate scale? Have you labelled your axes with units as well as labels? Have you indicated where tau is on each graph like you were asked to in the question? Is the shape of your graph an exponential shape like it's meant to be? And just really do you understand what you're doing? You can also check this. So I've just had a go of this in MATLAB to check. So let's pull up MATLAB. And I'm going to run my uh, voltage uh, simulation. So this is, that's my voltage one. So I've put my values in earlier. So my source voltage is 12. My capacitor value is there. I'm doing time from 0 to 5,280 seconds. And I've done it in 10 second intervals. The thing is with MATLAB is you can have a nice play around and see what's appropriate. Then I've got my resistor value here and I've calculated tau here. I'm calculating my voltage at each step here. And then I've just got my plotting stuff here. So let's run it and have a look. So here is my voltage across my capacitor. You can see I start at zero and I've got that nice exponential increase which should compare favorably to what I plotted by hand. So there we go, and there's figure one. So we can see we've got that nice shape and we can see that they agree approximately, so we've done it right. It's not easy to do this because you've not got MATLAB at your fingertips in an exam, but just plot the time constants, calculate for each time constant, join it together, and that's the best thing you can do for when you don't have MATLAB. So let's have a look and check our current is done correctly. So MATLAB, and I'll find my script for the current. Here we go. So that's just run now. Where's my editor? So once again, source voltage is 12. Capacitor value is defined. My time steps are defined. My resistor is con co my resistor is defined. My time constant is calculated, and I calculate my uh, voltage. That's not the voltage one. This is the current one that we need. Again, voltage, capacitance, time steps, resistance, and time constants all calculated. And I'm calculating my current in each one of these steps and then just plotting it. So we end up with our graph, which shows our um, current. And you can see MATLAB has done it in, this is times 10 to the minus six. So it was an appropriate scale I chose because this is just the auto fit. So good job us, let's have a look. Here we go, this is my uh, graph compared to my MATLAB graph. So you can see, ah, beautiful. Not bad at all for a hand plotted graph. So time in seconds, current in circuit, this is in, I, this I've written microamps, whereas this is times 10 to the minus six at the top, but it's the same difference and we've got it there. So that shows that it all works quite neatly. And this is why you can use MATLAB to double check that you've got things right. So that is a sample exam question that's quite a lot of marks available there so that is I think it's actually 25 marks because it is a big question I'll have to double check it mentally in my head but there we go that is a good example exam question it is difficult in places that is the point of it so if you can't do it all immediately don't worry you just need to have a bit of a practice I'll put up a second practice question soon but like I say please focus on the sample exam 
last year's paper as your main points. You can also redo all of your ROGO tests for practice if you think that would be helpful too.